Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Uh, we're happy to have you here for Accelerating Revenue Growth with Outcome-Driven Customer Success. We're really pleased to welcome our uh, founder and CEO, Paul Philp, to uh, be here with us today to speak to you. Just some uh, housekeeping before we get started. Uh, feel free to tweet us uh, online with the hashtag Practical Customer Success or uh, just mention us back at Andy. Uh, we'll be sending you the slide and the recording uh, about tomorrow after the webinar. So uh, no need to worry. And uh, we'll have lots of uh, Q&A time at the end. So uh, without further ado, uh, here's Paul Phil. Thanks, Matthew. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, as you can probably tell, I have um, uh, I have a bit of laryngitis uh, and, uh, uh, today, so um, I'll, be, uh, I'll be spraying my throat every now and then and drinking some water, but we'll make it through. And um, you can just imagine that this is your first uh, webinar given by Kermit the Frog. Great, so let's dive right in. So today we'll be talking about um, uh, the change from a product-driven uh, industry to an outcome-driven industry and then um, the uh, emerging, uh, the new DNA in our customer relationships that's emerging from that. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about the customer experience curve uh, and how it's our accountability to manage uh, that with our customers. That's probably the, the most important part of the webinar today. Um, then we'll, uh, talk about the pathway from here to there um, with a maturity model. Um, then I will have a quick word from our sponsor, which is me, a um, couple of quick slides on Amity, and then we'll open the floor to your questions. Great, so about, uh, about 10 years ago, we started to see a massive change uh, in the technology industry. Um, the, previously, uh, we sold our products with a, um, a on-premise license model, and uh, we would get paid for the software on day one, and then it was really up to our customers to make that software work. That's not the way it works anymore, and so I, in, uh, in the bubbles on this chart, I've just put up some of the, the concepts that we're all coping with. So the big change, obviously, was the change to recurring revenue and consumption revenue. And uh, that led to the land and expand business model where we wanted to get the customer in as quickly and easily as possible and then grow out from there. Um, then we started to have to worry about churn. We didn't want to be putting revenue in at the top, having it flow out at the, the bottom. Um, and then... Um, we moved beyond just SaaS, and now we're seeing uh, everything as a service, you know, car service as a service, um, investment as a service, software as a service, business processes as a service, advertising as a service. And now we have to um, worry uh, way more about adoption uh, and renewal than we ever uh, had to before. We're focused on the customer journey. Uh, in a deeper way than we ever have been before. And that leads us to the outcome-based value proposition and ultimately with our focus on customer outcomes. So that's a lot of change in the, in the last few years. It has a profound change on the, the way we operate our businesses. And from where I sit, we're still in the very early innings, the second inning or the third inning of that change. There's a lot more to come. But the end result is that the um, SaaS business is a relationship business. It's not a product business. Products are important. Services are important. But it's a relationship business and not in a, a you know, kumbaya kind of let's all grab hands with our customers and sing a happy song kind of way. It's in a... Uh, you know, if our customers don't keep getting value, they don't keep paying us kind of way. And so if we want them to keep coming back and keep paying us, we got to be on our toes and we got to be doing what they need. And um, to be more specific, what they need is um, a, some level of business outcome. 
there, as Clayton Christensen talks a lot about, they, um, they hire our services, our companies, to do a particular job for them, produce a particular uh, outcome. And um, so it's important to really get clear on, on this concept of what the outcomes are our customers are hiring us to produce. So first of all, an outcome is something that happens as a result of an activity or a process. Um, and so uh, things that aren't an outcome, being able to run more ads, have you know, getting a platform where I can run more ads, that's not a that's not an outcome. Finding more customers, that's an outcome. Having a better user interface, being uh, the easiest to use, the most beautiful UI, that's not an outcome in itself. Just the ability to write more blog posts, that's an outcome. A pretty newsletter or well formatted newsletter, that's not an outcome. More subscribers, that's an outcome. Uh, improved collaboration, that's a great benefit, but it's not an outcome. Higher revenue per employee, that's a, that's a collaboration related outcome. Improved SEO, looks good on a, a in-house presentation, but it's uh, still a halfway measure. What we're really looking for is to generate more leads. So those are you know, examples of what is and isn't an outcome. And let's see, um, let's uh, go to our first poll question. And um, uh, do you track your customer outcomes today? Great, very interesting. So uh, it's about 50-50. So half of you are tracking uh, customer outcomes today and half of you aren't tracking customer outcomes today. Great, thanks for participating in that poll. Okay, so then the new value proposition, the new reality of the SaaS and cloud-based recurring revenue businesses is the customer is holding vendors accountable for business outcomes. You know, our customers look to Amity to reduce churn, to increase upsell, to increase the scalability and lower the cost of the customer success organization. If, if we provide that, if we do a good job of that, then they'll be our customers for a long time. If we don't, they won't. Okay, <clears throat> so as the SaaS industry started to realize that this process of producing outcomes, uh, making customers successful was really important for the growth of the organization, um, about 10 years ago, some innovators started creating the customer success function. So I think uh, Mark Benioff at Salesforce and uh, Paul Tashima at Eloqua were really innovators in that. Uh, in that function and kind of the place we got to is okay outcomes are important important to driving uh, growth from our existing customer base let's let customer success do it and so today customer success owns the mandate uh, to drive customer growth whether or not you're um, comped that way or bonus that way or held accountable that way. Almost always you are being looked at that way. And so your KPIs to drive customer growth are lowering churn, driving upsells, getting renewals, increasing adoption of the product, getting referrals for the product. So that's a, that's a big load that the customer success team has taken on just in the last few years. And I would say that when we started Amity, three years ago, maybe 15% of the SaaS companies we talked to had a customer success team. And um, I would say it's, we go months and months and months without running it with, uh, without running across a SaaS company that doesn't have a customer success team today. So it's a well entrenched function. Um, so what's the best 
customer success strategy. Give them the big load that the uh, customer success team is carrying and how strategic that is to the business. So now, <coughs> the, the Pacific Crest SaaS um, uh, survey every year tells us that uh, a dollar of revenue from a new logo typically costs about a dollar two, dollar three to get in the door, which means every new customer loses money in the first year. And uh, an incremental dollar from an existing customer uh, usually costs 17 cents. And um, that means 83 cents of that is profit. And so the, the existing customer base is really the cash flow and profit engine of a SaaS business. And so to, to really drive that successfully and effectively, the SaaS organization uh, needs to take on focusing on generating the outcomes that the customers are, are paying them to get. And they need to do it in a predictable, scalable, repeatable, and affordable way. So that means that customer success is really a key business process <coughs> for the entire SaaS company. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> so the idea that the customer success team can um, uh, be an independent, off to the side, um, standalone uh, department with all of that responsibility, it, it really isn't true. It, it's a company-wide business process where customer success is on the front line. Um, and uh, if, if the whole company is going to be re responsible you know, for producing customer outcomes, the, the marketing team needs to market that way. The sales team needs to sell that way. The product team needs to build the right product features to make that happen, as well as the customer success team working with the customer to get those outcomes. Okay, so let's see where um, the customer uh, success team reports into your organization today. Very interesting. A little bit different than what we uh, what we saw in the webinar this morning. So, 36% uh, report into the CEO. 21% uh, report into sales. Uh, nobody reports into marketing. 21% report into product, and 21% uh, report into other. Uh, I would imagine that's uh, finance or ops in some way. Great. Thank you for uh, answering that poll. There we are. Okay. So given that um, the company has to have uh, a company-wide uh, business process that is repeatedly and scalably focused on producing customer success, um, and that's going to be the growth engine for the company, that's going to mean that there's an entirely different type of relationship uh, with our customers than has traditionally been the case in the software industry, the technology industry. So the DNA of software success and the new type of relationship is DNA. And um, it's a, I had this uh, image, and I thought it was uh, a powerful image, is that there are two independent but correlated and uh, mutually dependent uh, paths going on in a, in a DNA molecule and in the relationships with a, with, a bit, with a customer. So at the top level is the vendor success process. We all know that well. And, um, you know, it's like reduce churn, get more sales, get more cash. Uh, produce better results for the co company, 
um, you know, we've, uh, we're all familiar and comfortable with that. Um, but if that is too out of balance, um, it actually starts creating friction in the relationship with the customer. So at the same time, we need to be managing uh, our own success process. We need to be managing the customer success journey. And I'll give you a few examples of um, uh, what I mean by that. And um, so I'm going to use the, the Technology Services Industry Association, the TSIA, has this model called Layer, and uh, uh, Land, Adopt, Expand, and Renew. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how that looks from the vendor's point of view and how that looks from the customer's point of view. So obviously, we all pay close attention to landing new new customers. And um, yeah, we work very hard at that, and we're all very excited when that happens. It's kind of you know the drumbeat of a successful business. But our customers don't care about that. They don't even think about that. What they care about is making the right decision. It's a big commitment. It's an uncomfortable commitment um, that they want to make. And so you know they don't think of it as you know us getting a, another pelt. They think of it as making an important decision. And so the more we're able to align ourselves with helping our customers make that decision, you know, the, the more of our own results we'll produce. Probably the biggest gap between SaaS vendors and customers today is at the next phase. So in the adopt phase, this is where you want to see customers using the features. Are they producing dashboards? Are they generating reports? Are they... Um, hitting your key features and uh, it doesn't look like that at all to most customers most customers are looking to produce a new level of outcome to improve the performance of their business and at this point they're transforming their business to produce that new level of outcome they have to change something they have to change their behavior they have to change their business processes they have to change their metrics they have to change something. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So at the, at the very point where we're worried about are they adopting our product, they're worried about how do we change our business, how do we change our workflow um, to get to that next level of, of performance. The... Uh, next step is expand. So you know they've uh, they've made it through the <coughs> the transformation. So we're thinking hey, we can sell them more seats, we can sell them more reports, we can sell them more of whatever it is that we have to sell. And um, at that point, customers are starting to think, well, that was a bit, that was a big change we just went went through. What are we getting? What's the outcome of that? And that's when they start measuring outcomes. And um, it's really easy at this point to align our expansion goals with our outcome goals. If their outcomes are on track or above track, they're going to be listening for an opportunity to expand. If they're disappointed with the outcomes, then the expansion conversation is probably going to be an awkward one. And then at the last step, we're thinking renewal. How can we get them signed up to a new contract? And they're thinking, evaluate. How did these guys do? Did we like working with them? Did we get the outcomes we were hoping for? Did we get any extra goodies? Um, what are we going to get next year if we do the same thing? And um, so, again, it's really easy to, to connect the renewal and the evaluate process. But um, it's up to us as the vendors to tie the renewal process to the outcomes that we produce for them. Okay, so the, the trickiest one is the second one where we're, we're thinking, are they adopting our, our uh, product? And they're thinking, how do I change behavior to get a new level of results? So that leads directly into the, the next part of the presentation where I talked about owning the customer experience curve. And if, if, if you're accountable, for the customer's outcome, then you're accountable for 
helping them move up the, the experience curve to the next level of performance. So when a customer starts working with you, they're working at some level of outcome right now. So they may be, you know, just to pick up uh, an outcome, they may be getting 20 leads a week. And um, they hired your marketing automation or your content marketing software because they want to get from uh, 20 leads a week up to 50 leads a week. And um, But you, your software alone, no matter how great and sexy and automatic and, and smooth and intelligent it is, isn't going to get them from 20 leads to 50 leads if they don't start changing their business processes, if they're not writing better content, if they're not um, publishing more of their content, uh, if they're not putting more call to actions out, you know, if they're not doing and measuring the stuff that leads to generating new leads, they're not going to be effective. And so, um, so they have an experience curve that they have to climb to be effective at the, the level of outcome that they want to produce. And we have to help them do that. And no matter what your business model is, <coughs> we all share this, we all share this challenge. So if you have a, uh, low touch or a no touch, um, uh, business model, or you do have a bunch of low touch customers in one of your segments, then you're going to have to do this in a self-serve way. Um, and you're going to have to do this with content or worksheets that help people um, uh, get up that, uh, that experience curve. And part of your job is going to be, you know, when someone isn't making it up the experience curve, getting them up by getting them on a training uh, webinar or, you know, whatever your tactics are. And if you're a high touch model, um, you, you know, you're going to have to reach out and um, sort of pull them up when they get stuck on that um, uh, that uh, S-curve part of the um, uh, experience curve. So this is the hard work of customer success. This is the day-to-day -day coaching and listening and being aware of how our customers are doing, getting up the, that experience curve. And you notice the experience curves have nothing to do with using your product. It has to do with being better at what they do in their business. And, um, you know, it's just we're aligned, you know, to produce a new level of outcome, you know, we're just, you know, on the line for making sure that they get better at doing their jobs. So that can mean, you know, helping them fix uh, or implement business processes, helping them implement technology, helping them uh, update their skill level, Helping, helping them put new practices in place, helping them develop new capabilities. None of that has to do with your product per se, but these are all things that go into making your customers successful with your product. It's a very different way of thinking about a relationship with a customer. Okay, so if our job is to help customers move up that customer experience curve, to get them uh, more effective, more productive with their um, in their in their own jobs, then uh, one of the tools we have is the customer success plan or the customer outcome plan. Um, but if we're thinking about it in terms of the experience curve, then um, you might think backwards from the outcomes. You know what uh, what outcomes are you going to help produce for them? what processes are going to have to change and in what way, what new activities are going to have to happen, what new KPIs are going to have to be measured, uh, what tools are um, you going to need. It's, um, you know, for example, uh, we frequently recommend to our customers that have to take a lot of notes with, while working with their customers that they get a second screen. It just makes note taking way more effective and it's uh, minimal cost. And uh, what new capabilities are they going to have to implement? You know, what skills do they have to get? What practices do they have to put in place? So this is, you know, I'm sure for your business, some of this will um, 
the emphasis will be more on capabilities or more on processes. Um, uh, but uh, if you if you're accountable for that level of outcome, um, you're going to be helping them have to help them change the way they do their business. Okay, so the switch to a recurring revenue model has uh, put the uh, emphasis, uh, the growth emphasis on growing our uh, revenue from our existing customer base. So we've developed this new function called customer success. We're asking them to produce that new revenue and to, to be accountable for that, um, for that growth. And customer success has realized, oh, if I really want to grow our existing customer base, I, I better start getting effective at helping them get the outcomes that they're, they're looking to, to get. And so you become accountable for your customers' outcomes. But, um, but we're not going to make that switch. It's not like you're going to come in uh, tomorrow morning and turn on a light switch and boof, you're going to be a, a full company-wide customer outcome accountability company. So there's going to be a, a process that gets you there. So we've developed a maturity model, a five-level maturity model based on the Software Engineering Institute's five-level uh, software capability model. And so, you know, you start at level one when you're ad hoc and manual and just kind of making it up. And we've all been there. And the next level to get to is repeatable so that when it's repeatable, you can, you know, say to a customer, you know, I'm going to help you get that level of outcome. And you can, you know, say, say what you do and do what you say. And then as you get more sophisticated and more mature, the processes become managed and they become less person dependent. You can bring new people in predictably. You can uh, handle losing people, moving people onto other roles in the company. And then as you get uh, more effective, um, it, the process starts to get, to get measured. And uh, uh, so you can see where the results are coming from. And then when, um, when you go to the mountaintop and sit with your guru, guru um, you can become an optimizing process where you're taking all those measurements and feeding them back in, in a closed loop to, to improve your performance. Um, I think realistically, if, um, if we all got to level three, it'd be a pretty good world. Okay, so to, to move up the, the levels, there's four kind of tracks that we have to focus on. So the first track, um, of what I call customer insights, the ability to really have visibility into what's happening with your customer, and then uh, managing the customer outcome and the customer journey. The third track is vendor success. Are, you know, what's, are we getting our revenue? Are we hitting our margin numbers? Are we getting our cash flow? Are we getting our references and referral? Is our brand still solid? Our reputation still where we want it to be? All of those things that you know we manage on a day-to-day -day basis today. And then the last one is service delivery. And um, you know our service delivery capabilities are going to have to mature as, uh, uh, as we get uh, better and more bold at promising outcomes for our customers. So I'll just take you through a couple. So the customer in insight track, kind of the, um, uh, opening, the uh, opening place for customer insight tracking is basic usage tracking. You know, what did your users do on your product today? And then the next level up are uh, more descriptive metrics. So they give you a better picture of what's the state of my customer's business today. So there's... Um, you know, uh, more of a metric and KPI focus, and you can look at it and go, yeah, that customer's doing well, that customer's not doing well. The next level up is what I call explore and discover, and that's when you're getting uh, really great exception reports, really great alerting, and you're starting to learn stuff about your customers that you didn't know. And, um, you know, we, we know from our customers that that's uh, awesome when that happens. The next level up uh, are predictive analytics and uh, where the 
uh, software is predicting when someone is at risk or when someone is an opportunity. And then the last level on the customer insight track is when your uh, insights are actually giving you advice. So, you know, you haven't talked to this customer uh, for three months and they've got this usage pattern and uh, I recommend that you send them this training module, uh, that kind of capability. Okay, so it's time for our uh, next polling question. So, what, at what level would you say your customer insight process is at today? So, level one is basic usage tracking. Level two is that descriptive view of your customer's business. Level three is uh, exploratory, where you can you know, get in and play with the data and discover new patterns. Uh, level four is predictive analytics, where you know, your customer insight is predicting who's going to be, uh, uh, who's at risk and who's an opportunity. And then uh, number five is advisory. Great. Thank you very much. Pretty interesting results. Again, very different from uh, the webinar this morning. 23% uh, of you um, are at level one. 46% of you are at level two. 15% are at level three. Uh, nobody's at level four. And 15% uh, are at, uh, at level five. That's great. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the other tracks um, that um, mature as you mature in your ability to produce outcomes for your customers predictably and scalably. scalably. You'll notice that these all work together, that um, it's going to be very hard to map your customer's journey and uh, keep on top of that if you don't have good descriptive analytics. Um, it, you know, they, they, all, they all work uh, tightly together. And uh, if you don't have good customer outcome insights, it's really going to be hard to do predictive analytics. So you can see how you know, each level kind of uh, uh, fits, fits together and you kind of step through them all um, at, the, at the same time. So in, on the customer journey and uh, outcome uh, track, the basic level is to be able to define your customer outcomes. What are we promising our customers? What are our customers expecting from us? And then uh, the next level up is to be able to map the customer journey. And in this context, I, I mean something a little bit different than the customer journey from a marketing or a persona point of view or a UI design point of view. I mean, what does a customer really have to go through to produce the outcomes that they're looking to produce? You know, is customer journey and the experience curve are really closely related. Then the next level up are customer outcome insights. So how, how's, how are my customers doing? Are they on track? Are they off track? Are they trending well? Are they off trend? Um, and uh, uh, what should I, you know, where are the opportunities to improve my training? Um, the next level up is to be able to track the customer's journey. So uh, where are they in that journey? To where are they on that experience curve? And um, you know, where are they stuck? Uh, how long have they been stuck? How long is it taking them uh, to move from one level to the next level? How can I help them? And then the, the last level is real customer performance insights. Um, you know, who's winning? Who's losing? Um, and uh, what do I do about that? Okay. Okay, the vendor success track. We all know this. We've been doing this for our whole careers. I'm just going to move on to the um, service delivery track. And uh, forgive my type, my, my subhead typo there. So the... Core level of service delivery is product support. The ability to add, answer uh, 
basic questions about your product. How do I do this? I, I'm seeing this error message. What does it mean? Um, the next level up is reactive customer success. This is where um, you're providing more service than just product support. You're helping them integrate your uh, software as a service product into their business. But um, you don't have all the tooling and the process around you. So you're still firefighting most of the time, responding to, to your inbox. The next level up is proactive coaching. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> no, sorry. When I say um, the change from reactive customer success to proactive, I put you in coaching mode because that's what it means to be proactive. You know, you're at that point, if you're being proactive, you're helping that customer get up that experience curve towards the outcome that they're, they're looking for. So you, uh, uh, you become Mr. Miyagi and you're saying wax on, wax off. The next level up is uh, strategic advisory services. That's where you're partnering at a strategic level with your customers and helping them set their strategy. And the next level up is outcome engineering, where you're helping them decide, you know, over the next 48 months, what level of each outcome are we looking to produce as a business and what changes to the business do we need to make to produce those levels of outcome. Okay, so that's a, a little bit on the maturity model for, um, you know, moving to being that uh, predictable, scalable customer outcome producing machine. Um, so let's, uh, let's wrap up that part of the, the webinar. So uh, uh, outcomes, uh, an outcome focus aligns vendors and customers' interest. Um, it's, you know, that, that's pure interest alignment. Um, and uh, outcome focus, customer success, is a critical company-wide business process. It can't just be the customer success team. Uh, the marketing team needs to be talking outcomes. Certainly the sales team needs to be selling outcomes and communicating the outcome promises and expectations to customer success. And the product team sure better be building the features that our customers are going to need to do to make the process changes they need to produce those outcomes. The uh, second thing that we talked about today, and probably the most important, is owning that customer learning curve. You know, if, if, if they're going to get to a new level of outcome, they're going to have to change a lot of things about the way they operate their, their section of the business. You know, their day-to-days are going to change, their practices are going to change, their capabilities are going to change. And if you're on the hook, for that new level of outcome, that means your leverage is helping them get up that experience curve as quickly and as effectively as you can. And the third, which is an implication, which is deep vertical knowledge is really going to be critical to being able to own the customer's uh, outcome. So if you're in the marketing automation software business, Having really your customer success and your marketing teams and your sales teams have a really deep um, uh, knowledge of, of marketing automation and marketing automation for the retail market. It's very different than marketing automation for the banking market. And so having that, that deep vertical knowledge is really going to be critical if you're going to be able to have the authority and the credibility and just the the knowledge and insight to help your customers perform better in their own business and to coach them. Great. So that's a, a quick introduction to um, uh, outcome-focused uh, customer success. So I'm just going to give you the, the two-second introduction to Amity. Amity is a powerful customer success software designed to be process automation for companies who want to, to practice this kind of customer success. And um, so we enable the high precision relationships that you need 
to be able to manage all of your customers and focus on the right customer at the right time. So we let you build really quantified relationships and quickly move up that maturity curve on the customer insight side. We help you build algorithms for uh, managing your customer relationships. An algorithm is just something that tells you that right now this customer is more important than that customer. And um, we feed all of that into our smart playbooks. And smart playbooks do things like let you track your customer's journey, uh, let you track your, your own internal renewal process. And we can do that manually or fully automatically um, and, uh, and in real time. And then obviously we feed that into our inside reports so that you can see what's happening uh, in, in your team. And so, you know, no surprises. We help you make your uh, customer success process scalable, improve the productivity of your team, and really make customer success, success a strategic hub for the entire business. You've got a lot of data and a lot of knowledge that's very helpful for the whole business. <coughs> and it wouldn't be right uh, today not to talk about the outcomes that we're accountable for to our customers. <coughs> Besides being able to speak, is the first is minimizing churn. That's kind of table stakes. Um, maximizing upsell and cross-sell. Minimize, uh, maximizing secondary revenue from references, referrals, advocates, and minimizing the cost of uh, the customer success organization. This is how we're judged by our customers. Okay, so that was the uh, word from our sponsor. Now I'd like to turn it over to you and um, see if you have uh, any questions. Um, anything that you'd like to understand about uh, outcome-driven customer success? Anything that came up today? Yes, the recording of the presentation will come out um, uh, tomorrow at some point. Yeah, so um, a, a, cl a client journey is, um, you, you know, the level of, uh, you know, their, their operating procedures today. So, for example, we, um, uh, at Amity, we set a goal to triple um, our lead gen generating uh, capabilities um, starting on Labor Day. So we implemented a couple of new pieces of software. And um, then we had to, uh, you know, change the way that we market our events. We had to be more regular with our, our content production. And um, we had to, um, you know, change the way that we uh, capture metrics and, and track performance. So those were all um, steps that our vendors had on a, um, on a, journey that they were helping us through and uh, uh, they coached us through all of that and then they also wanted us to get better at um, tracking our all of our campaigns to a persona and uh, you know they uh, they had they haven't succeeded at getting us to uh, up the that experience group yet okay in service delivery track can you explain more about the proactive coaching what what should be done in this stage and how yeah so um, at that stage in proactive coaching you're really partnering with your customers to help them improve the way that they do their their job or help them improve their business processes or help them implement new capabilities and um, uh, the reason I, I suggested uh, uh, a new way of thinking about the customer success plan or the customer outcome plan is because that's a place where you can capture the, the changes that are going to have to be made on both sides for the, um, for the customer to move to the next level and um, of performance. So, for example, with, with Amity, it's, you know, 
very often the case that we're um, working with, uh, we start working with a customer who's pretty reactive. You know, that's pretty typically the case and looking to get uh, uh, proactive. And um, one of the things that we just know we have to do is uh, coach them through setting up uh, processes, setting up playbooks that are you know, going to lay the foundation for them to be able to get um, uh, proactive. And then we have to coach them through rolling that out to their team. There's you know, ways of rolling it out to the team that work. And there's ways of rolling it out to the team that produce resistance. And um, so we help our customers uh, be effective at rolling out the, the new practices or new processes to the team. Okay. Do you have solutions for B2C companies and startups? Yes, we do. Great. Anybody uh, else have a question? Oh, sorry. When you recognize the need for a process change or a need for a new skill, what strategies or tactics have you used to getting them uh, on board? Well, um, uh, so the most important thing is developing uh, a great working relationship with the champion at your customer who has the ability to make these changes. And, um, you know, it's that relationship is really the most important. And uh, you have to be able to, um, you know, have straightforward conversations with them. So that's the, the very first thing. And then, um, you know, you can, never, you can never make your customers wrong for the way they're doing it today. So that's definitely something that, that doesn't work. And, um, and sometimes you just keep having to say it different ways. You know, sometimes we've had customers um, who get it right away. And sometimes we have to say it in five or six different ways. And um, you just have to, to keep working with them until they can hear it. You polled where customer success reports into. What is your recommendation? Um, absolutely, my recommend recommendation is CEO. Um, I think that um, the CEO is accountable for customer success, and the CEO can uh, uh, simplify. You know, if you need new features from the product, they can help you uh, have the authority to do that. And <clears throat> you know, you know, there's. If you report it to, to sales, there's too much of a risk that you'll focus just on, on the, the vendor success part of the job, not the, the customer journey uh, part of the job. So there's, there's trade-offs, but there's risks with everything, but the CEO is the, the most effective in my experience. You're welcome. <laughs> Great. So uh, those are all the questions in the in the queue today. Um, anyone have any last questions? Well, great. Thank you very much for coming out today. I really appreciate your participation, and um, we will have the recording in the deck uh, available for you at some point tomorrow. Okay. So. Um, just want to let you know that um, we have a promotion going on in December with this great Customer Success Hero t-shirt. So anybody who signs up, uh, who is on this webinar, who signs up for a demo in December, we'll give you a Christmas present and send you uh, a Customer Success Hero t-shirt that fits you perfectly. So thanks again for coming out, and we'll talk soon.